defense, and Randall is absolutely torching him. That drive was clink. Randall tries a three-pointer. That's good. Julius Randall with his fourth three. It's Burks. Burks tied up. Randall tries a three. Puts it in. Julius Randall from downtown. Quickly. Inside the arc finds Randall. Randall, the layup off the glass is good. It's been so long since I've actually enjoyed watching the Knicks. We're about halfway through the season, and I can't believe they're actually in the playoff race. It's freaking crazy. As of this video, they're right smack dab in the middle of the Eastern Conference playoff standings, although the competition is pretty tight. There's a lot to be excited about in New York. Equipped with the second best defensive rating in the league, the Knicks have flourished under Tom Thibodeau, going from the 23rd best defense to second. That's a ridiculous jump, and you could clearly see it on the court as well. Not bad for a team that was considered as one of the worst prior to the season. In fact, 538.com, one of the most accurate websites that predicts NBA standings using statistical analysis, even their formula got it wrong. They predicted the Knicks would be the third worst team in the league, with just a 5% chance of making the playoffs. Oh, what a turn of events. Anyway, how's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's talk about the New York Knicks. If you aren't paying attention to them, you should, cause for the first time in a long time, losing to them is no longer an embarrassment. Uh, I guess the Timberwolves thought differently. Maybe they shouldn't have fired the coach after losing to the Knicks. It's not the same Knicks anymore, guys. So, why are they good now? How are they even doing this good despite all the odds stacked against them? Well, let's just take a look at the roster first. On paper, they didn't make any significant changes in personnel, but the most important player has been Julius Randle, who blossomed into an all-star for the first time ever. Throughout his young career, he's always shown flashes of that star potential, on the Lakers, on the Pelicans, but he couldn't find a home until he got to New York. On a young, developing team, the Knicks made it clear that Randle had the green light to do whatever he wanted, and it gave him a ton of positive reinforcement. This was different compared to LA, where they were a bit tough on him and he'd get benched for the slightest mistake. With free reigns to lead the team, Randall emerged as the go-to guy who turned the franchise around. But for him, he knew everyone had it in them all along. Ever since the beginning of the season, Randall enforced himself as the leader, and he was very vocal about his goal of bringing the Knicks back to the glory days. When a reporter asked him what changed in his mentality, Randall gave credit to his assistant coach, Kenny Payne, who was also his mentor back in college at Kentucky. Randall stated, He's a guy who pushes you to your absolute limit, further than you think you can go. He taught me how to be a good teammate, he taught me really how to work. But besides Randall, the Knicks over the years have made some subtle yet solid moves to get them to where they are now. This process started back in the summer of 2017, when Scott Perry took over as the general manager. Almost immediately, his first decision was a massive deal. Carmelo Anthony, the face of the Knicks, was traded away to the Oklahoma City Thunder. It was a trade that was kind of unpopular at the time. I mean, we all knew Melo was washed up, even Knicks fans knew that. But the trade was unpopular because the Knicks barely got anything back. It was just Ennis Cantor, Doug McDermott, and a 2018 second rounder. That's not a lot for trading away your franchise player. However, it was that 2018 second rounder that turned out to be a gem. Perry used that pick to draft Mitchell Robinson, who's now a massive part of the team's success. In early 2018, Perry made another low-key trade that was also unpopular back then. Willie Hernan Gomez just had a decent rookie season, and he was showing some promise. But Perry used this as a chance to capitalize on his value. Hernan Gomez was traded to the Hornets in exchange for two second rounders. Perry then used one of those to move up in the 2020 draft, trading it to OKC for Emmanuel quickly, along with another first rounder he got from flipping Marcus Morris. Then, he used the other second rounder and packaged it with Dennis Smith Jr. in exchange for Derrick Rose from the Pistons. Both Quickly and Rose have been huge, a massive boost to the bench, which for the Knicks was previously a weakness. 
Rose had a great stint in New York before, and he just fits well on any team coached by Thibodeau. The 2019 offseason was by far the most important one. As Perry signed Randall, he drafted RJ Barrett and signed Alfred Payton and Reggie Bullock. All of them have fit together perfectly, and these moves gave the Knicks a sense of identity. When Tom Thibodeau became the head coach a year later, that was the final piece of the puzzle. As I mentioned earlier, this team's biggest advantage, by far, is their defensive prowess. They're holding teams to the lowest field goal percentage and three-point percentage in the league. Opponents are shooting an abysmal 32% from three against the Knicks. This is the result of a defense that prioritizes aggressive trapping on the perimeter and collapsing on anyone who gets close to the paint. With very mobile big men like Nerlens Noel and Mitchell Robinson, along with lanky, wiry wing players quick on their feet, they blitz the pick and roll and give opponents as little breathing room as possible. It's hard to get a clean look against them. This aggressiveness is reminiscent of Thibodeau's old Chicago Bulls, but the quickness and switching ability is similar to that of the Miami Heat during the LeBron James era. Although the Knicks have been a great defensive team for the entire year, they flew under the radar for a while. They got better, everyone saw that, but most fans still didn't care at all. Just like every other good thing that happens to the Knicks, people thought this was just a flash in the pan. That would change in early February, in a game against the Portland Trailblazers. A game that made everyone realize, alright, the Knicks are kind of a problem. In the last two minutes of that game, the Blazers did not score a single point. After the game, a reporter asked Lillard, what on earth happened near the end of the game? Lillard responded, did you see how hard they were trapping me? I just thought they were aggressive. They obviously wanted to send a lot of attention to the ball. Blazers coach Terry Stotts noticed how hard it was to score on them, and it surprised him, considering the Blazers were one of the best offensive teams in the league. He said, There's not one particular thing when you look at the analytics, which everybody does, and that there wasn't one thing that really stood out other than the fact that teams do not shoot the ball well against them, which is ultimately the best metric to have. What I see is a team that plays hard, they play physical, they're active, they're aggressive, they go after loose balls, they're a hard-nosed defensive team. While the Knicks have been playing this style of defense all season long, it was that game against the Blazers that put them on the map. The rest of the NBA took notice. Teams started to realize the Knicks are not a joke anymore, guys. On top of all this, to make things even better, the Knicks also have the lowest payroll in the entire league. As of the 2020-21 season, they've only got $95 million committed to their entire roster. That's $15 million below the salary cap. That's such a breath of fresh air. If you've been a Knicks fan for a long time, you remember all those years where they'd be like millions over the cap, and yet still on the outside of the playoffs? That was all so frustrating. Now, to be in this new situation, it's amazing. There's so much room for them to develop and sign other players, and perhaps, when more and more players become aware of the good things going on, they'd be more willing to join the Knicks. Despite being the mecca of basketball, the Knicks' reputation has fallen off over the years. It's only now that they're finally becoming a respectable team once again. Of course, there's always some critics amidst the success. While the Knicks have shown significant signs of improvement defensively, they're still severely hampered on offense. In fact, they've been in the bottom 10 in offensive efficiency for the entire year, and it's been that way in previous years too. I don't think it's going to change either, as it's not a priority. Besides Randall, they don't have any other consistent go-to options, and frankly, just not enough good scorers who can create their own shots. Not enough firepower. So far, they've made up for it by sheer hard work, relentlessly crashing the glass and simply outworking their opponents. But talent-wise, they're not there yet. On one hand, they're greatly exceeding expectations, and they're finally a fun team to watch. On the other hand, they're just a ragtag group of guys who are overachieving under a great defensive system. From a roster standpoint, there's still a long way to go. They got the work ethic, but if they want to contend in the near future, they'll need more raw talent. Whether it's through a draft or gathering other young assets that other teams don't want. 
And just don't trade away all of your young players like you did before. Hopefully, the young guys will continue to develop. Anyway, that's all folks, that sums up this incredible turnaround by the New York Knicks. It's been a wild ride for the franchise, but there's finally a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel. It's a great season to build off of, and we didn't know how Thibodeau would change the team considering his shaky tenure in Minnesota. So far, it's looking great! What are your thoughts on the Knicks? Do you foresee them making the 2021 playoffs? If so, how far do you think they'll get? I don't think they're on the same level as the more proven teams of the East, but they could give anyone a run for their money. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.